In this lecture, we're going to cover how to perform HTTP requests in Angular using the HTTP service. Now, I've created a sample API on the CodeCraft website, which we can use in this example, and you can use as well, but it's an authenticated API. So to get access to it, just go to the CodeCraft Pro website, and then just sign up for our newsletter. And the first email you will receive from us will have an API access token inside it. So just keep a note of that. In the previous lecture on services and dependency injection, I showed you how to configure the HTTP service using the HTTP provider. And specifically, I showed you how to configure it so that it would always send an authorization header for each and every HTTP request. So just get your API token you received from the email from the CodeCraft Pro website and just paste it exactly here. The API I've created is one that returns a whole list of contacts. So we want to use those contacts instead of the ones I've hard coded into our contact service. So first things, I'm going to remove our hard coded contacts data. Next up, I'm going to inject our core Angular HTTP service. Instead of returning an object from our service, I'm going to create an object called self and return that instead. This is so we can refer to our own object from within our object, from within functions that we define on the self object. So now I create a load contacts function on our object. And then I type http.get. Now with the HTTP service, you can do a get request, a post request, a put, a delete. You can take a look at the HTTP documentation in the Angular website for all of the details. For our use case, I just want to perform a get request on the contact API available on the CodeCraft Pro website. So in doing that, the first parameter to the get request is the URL we want to get. And then to hook into a successful callback, we just type dot success and we pass in our success callback function. And to hook into any error messages from performing the HTTP request, we just type dot error and again we pass in the callback for the error function. And for now, I just want to log the response from the HTTP GET request. And the last thing I want to do is actually call the load contacts function. For our example, I'm going to call it from the controller. So now I'm going to preview the application and refresh. And you can see in the console, this is the response from the HTTP GET request. We've got a count, a next, a previous, but the one we're interested in is the results, which is an array of contacts. So now I create another property on the contact service called contact, which I just default to an empty array. And then on the success callback, I want to assign the results, which is the list of contacts, to our own contacts property. And then if we look at the controller, so in the controller, you can see we're still assigning the contacts.service.contacts to the scope model.contacts. So let's preview this. Well, it doesn't seem to be working. We're not actually printing out the list of contacts. Let's take a look why. So I'm going to open up ng inspector. And you can see in my controller, we've got the model and it's printing out here and it's got contacts, but the contacts is length zero. So this is because by the time we are assigning the contact service dot contacts to the scope model dot contacts, the contacts is actually an empty array. Only when the get callback, the get success handler gets called, do we populate the 
contacts with the data results. So you might be wondering why isn't data binding kicking in? This is the kind of thing that somebody new to Angular would get a bit confused at because typically when we change some data, everything automatically gets populated in Angular without you having to do anything. If you're confused on that or you're just not sure, go back and review the lecture on scopes. That will explain everything that we're seeing here. So there's a couple of ways to solve this problem. Since the contact service is an object itself, just set scope.model to the contact service. So then when somebody references scope.model.contacts, they're actually getting directly the contact service.contacts. So this is my preferred solution to this kind of problem. But another solution is to use promises. So what are promises? Promises are a solution to the asynchronous event callback problem in JavaScript. That's a big set of words, but all that means is that you have no control over when a function is going to get called. In synchronous programming, the whole application would block and wait for the success handler to get called. So what would happen in a synchronous program is that we would make this call and then the whole application would just wait. Wait for the HTTP get request to complete, wait for the contacts array to be populated, and only then would it proceed to the next statement to execute. But if web pages were built like that, we'd just have to wait forever for a web page to load. So that's why, especially when we're making network requests to other servers, we typically do it in an asynchronous fashion. That's to say we don't block any execution of anything else. And whenever the data comes back from the network request, we then do what we need to do. So the old school way to solve this problem is to pass a callback, a callback when we call load contacts from the controller. And then we call that callback when we get the results in the success handler. So let me show you. So in the load contacts function, when we're calling it from our controller, I pass in a function. And then when the HTTP get request completes, I call that function and I can pass it some data. So let's take a look here. So there we go, callback received. So promises are just a neater way of achieving the same goal. Let me undo what I've just done. There's a couple of different implementations of promises in JavaScript. Angular has its own implementation, which is exposed through the queue service. So to use it, we just inject the queue service into our contact service. And then as soon as load contacts gets called, we use the queue service to create what's called a deferred object. I just normally assign that to a variable called D. And at the end of the load contacts function, we just return D.promise. Now that the load contacts function returns a promise, we can hook into that in our controller. So here. So the load contacts function returns a promise. That promise has a function called then. Then takes two parameters. The first parameter is the success function and the second parameter is the error function. So let's take a look at the example. So the API got called, we got the data, but we don't see in the console either success or error getting printed out. So that means this then condition didn't get called. To do that, we go back into our load contacts function and in the callback from the HTTP get, in the success callback from the HTTP get, we type d.resolve. So only when d.resolve gets called, will the success callback in the then handler get called. So let's see that working. There you go. So we got the data from the HTTP get request, and then we did a resolve. And because of the resolve, the success then handler got called, 
and we printed out success. So everything is happening in the order we want it to happen. So as well as just calling d.resolve, you can also pass it a parameter, a string or an object, and that will get passed as the first parameter in the success callback. So I'm just going to print it out. So now let's go back into our example, refresh, and then we've got yo data received. So this is the message passed in from the load contacts resolve function. But how do we trigger the error callback? We can do that by instead of resolving, rejecting. So we just type d.reject and optionally a message. I'm going to print out the message in our callback. And because I'm rejecting on a successful callback, I should see the error in our example application here. So there you go, the error handler got called. So how we solve the problem using promises is by only assigning to scope.model.contacts when the then handler got called, because then we know the contacts has been received on the contact service. Oh, and also got through, remember to resolve it. So there you go, a quick introduction to the HTTP service in Angular and how to use promises using the queue service.